Hey, yo, we are back. Hidden chest. And today, the word of the day is 100%. I'm not gonna go to fucking bed tonight knowing that I wanna step on that fucking Olympia stage one day and we don't give it 100%. I wanna go to bed tonight saying I didn't fucking miss a meal, I gave my workout 100%, and we got the best fucking pump we could get. So let's go kill this shit. I am super fucking hyped for today. Killing some chest, it's my weak point. And your weak point, you need to give 100% if you want that bitch to grow. So let's go kill this shit, come on! So I don't think the workout starts until you get a pump first. So do a little chest flies, get the blood in the muscle, focus on the squeeze, focus on that contraction. So right when we hop on that bench press, we're already contracting the muscle, we're already ready to fucking give it 100%. Oh. All right, so first set, keeping it in that lower, lower to mid chest. Second set, we're gonna put some blood in the upper chest, bring the elbows up. Oh, still focusing on the contraction. All right. My chest is already pumped, so let's hop on that bench. All right, one big goal I have with this channel is bringing back hard, old school barbell and dumbbell training because the amount of fucking guys I've trained with who don't even break a sweat during their workout or they're so optimal with their training that it takes away the intensity of everything they do. And like I was doing workout last week, chest day with a guy. He was so, hey, you have a good one, right? And he was so focused. We were doing the, we we're doing the uh, pec fly. He was so focused on everything being Perfect, perfect, but the intensity went completely out of the fucking window. And intensity is what builds the muscle. Taking the muscle past what it believes it can do, you putting more stress than you did the week prior is what's gonna make that muscle grow. And so if you take that intensity out of it, you're not taking the muscle to 100%, you're not taking it to failure, and all you're doing is putting blood in the muscle, which a pump can elicit recovery, but when you really get in and you destroy those fibers and then you get home and you eat and you repair those fibers, that's what builds the muscle. The pump is great. It can expand that muscle. It can create some growth, but actually destroying those muscle fibers is what's gonna really bring muscle growth. So it's a big goal I have with this channel is just bringing back to this generation, my generation, the hard school, heavy barbell and dumbbell training that just isn't around anymore. Everything's so optimal. Everyone's so focused on the perfect, perfect form, getting the perfect, perfect contraction. It's like, nah, even if you're less than perfect in your reps, but you give it 100 fucking percent. Look at the guy, look at Ronnie Coleman, look at fucking Branch Warren, some of the best bodybuilders to ever lift. Even Jay Cutler. These guys weren't perfect. They weren't doing perfect optimal training, but they bring 100% intensity to every workout and it made them fucking grow. If you see Ronnie doing uh, walking barbell lunges, this man was doing this range of motion. It was like barely any range of motion. But the fucker had the biggest legs you've ever seen. So optimal training has its place. Optimal training and the science behind the things does have its place. But the number one thing is intensity. And you're not gonna be able to learn what true intensity is until you go balls to the wall, until you train like a fucking animal. Once you train like a fucking animal for years on end, then you can bring it to optimal. Then you can optimize everything. But you can't, if you have nothing to optimize, how the fuck are you supposed to optimize? So build that base, build that foundation, get nasty, get heavy, get up to 400 pounds on the bench, get up to you know, 500 pounds on the squat, 700 pounds on the deadlift. Once you're there, then we can refine everything. And I'm not there yet, and I'm still working to build it. What I really wanna to bring to this, this generation is that you know, we still need to train hard. And the old school guys look at us like pussies, so let's try to 
Let's try to bring some heavy barbell dumbbell training back. It's my mission. I was feeling really good. Last week we hit it for four. So this week try to hit it for five, six, seven, eight. Just more than we hit last week. Yeah. I hit it for four last week, so okay. anything more than that would be a, be a victory. Ooh. Three, two, here we go. Come on. Yep. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> Come on. Yep. <clears throat> easy. Yep. <clears throat> easy. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Come on. Try it. Let's go. Uh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Much appreciated. All right, now bring the bring the weight down and just fucking rep it out. Get the biggest pump as I possibly can. Just rep, 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 rep. Until that bitch is laying on your neck. I think it'd be pretty cool to die in the gym. I'll be honest with you. Let's hit this shit. Two sets um, and set sets. Or no, we're not gonna do set sets. We're gonna go one, one and a half reps. So one full, half, one full, half. And we're not gonna drop the weight till I literally can't move that dumbbell an inch. Let's go. I'm trying to... Okay. All right, mid-workout, feeling up. Some carbs, some amino acids, halfway through the workout. And I just saw a clip back in the 50s of Sergio Oliva talking about this, but posing middle of your workouts seeing the physique come alive, seeing what you need to build, seeing what you need to improve. It also flushes a lot of blood into the muscle. But this is old school. People don't do this anymore. Posing mid-workout.
learning how to contract those muscles also allows you to train It also teaches you how to flex your muscles whilst you're training. And the better mind-muscle connection you have, the farther you can take those sets, is the more you get out of the muscle when you're training. So pumped. None of my chest is uh, striated, but you're fully pumped. The striations go in, you can really see the shape of what, how big it's gonna be with striations one day. I think that's beautiful about a pump is you get to see what that's gonna look like in a couple months. And this is what my chest will look like just walking around. And imagine when my chest is this big with the pump and I get it to this size just walking around, what the pump's gonna look like at that point. That's what's beautiful about the gym you can see in the future. Let's go kill some decline press. So, superset, high to low cable flush, and then low to high cable flush. Why is this beneficial? Because I thought of it and it's gonna suck. That's why it's beneficial.
That indeed sucked ass. Oh my God. All right, now we're gonna slow it down. Slow and controlled. Get real scientific about it. We're done. Call it. Fucking. Again, I'm good, dude. I'm done. Ow. Shit hurts. So fucking bad. Really fucking bad. Ow. But never skip out on the post workout posing set. Fuck. Boys, Jesus almighty. Yeah, we should definitely not pull that shot in the off season. That looks terrible. Oof. Still learning how to hit that side chest properly. Cause as I've been growing, the shot's looking different. So having to hit it a little differently. Not leg day, but y'all know what it is. Strison starting to come through on the shoulders, and it's off season. I like to see it. Rear delt really coming through. Yeah, that's gonna look nasty in prep.
just still need to improve my arms, chest. Um, a little bit of traps for sure. Um, abductors on my legs. Um, I would like, my hamstrings look really thick from the back. Um, my calves are really good, but my hamstring from the side is where, number one, I need to learn how to pose it better, but number two, um, it just needs a bigger drop um, on that side. It's not looking bad, but definitely because my quads are such a strong point, those need to come up. So I've added deadlifts in the program. Um, just so on back day, we were getting a pretty big stimulus on the hamstrings and then obviously still working them on leg day. Um, but shoulders in a really good spot. Um, if my chest looked like this, not pumped, we'd be in a very good spot right now. Um, my front lat needs to come, it needs to be a better shot. Um, my back poses are my strongest shot, so really this off season, just been hammering, trying to focus on that um, upper body. I mean the front side of my body. Um, Cause even from the back, my hamstrings, my glutes, um, calves, um, then all the way going up through my back is very, very strong. So from my back shots, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna beat everyone on those fucking back shots. It's just trying to bring that vision to the front as well. Um, once we bring that up, it's game over for anyone who wants to try to fucking compete with me. But let's hit a couple back shots. Oh, hamstrings are a little dug out even in the off season. I like, I like. Last off season, I never even got my hamstrings dug out in the off season. So. I don't know if those look good. Those are hard. It's hard to, I don't know why it's hard to hit your back shots when your front side is fully fucking pumped. <laughs> I don't know if it's a range of motion thing, but I have no idea how that looked. Ooh. Sit back on it a little more. Need also be more vertical with it. I'm not being shadowed by the light on stage. There we go. That feels right. But still, just working on posing. Through the off season, has changed drastically. Um, oh. It's changed drastically just because I'm improving body parts that were never there before. Um, which is good, which is good, but as you improve certain body parts, you have to pose differently um, and shots start to look a lot differently. So just as the off season goes on, I'm trying to adjust posing. I pose every single, every, every single day, even on my off day. Um, I wake up in the morning on my off day and just get posing out of the way, a quick 20, 30 minutes, that's all you need. Um, and really just trying to focus and see my physique every day. And then every day I try to visualize what it's gonna look like in the future um, and see, and once I have that vision in my head of what it's gonna look like in the future, then I can put that on my physique. So when I go in and train, I know earlier that morning when I was posing, I saw 
my lower chest was coming up. So today when I was working out, this is what I was really visioning. This part of my chest is really focused on squeezing because I saw in the mirror when I was posing this morning that this part was tucked up. We have a pump right now, so it looks a little better, but this part was tucked up and it needs to be better. So today when I was hitting that flat press, I was really focusing on just there, on that decline press, really just focusing on hitting here, really trying to focus on that spot that I saw in the mirror this morning needed to improve. And that's when you really, I feel like that's where the magic really happens is when you can look yourself in the mirror, envision exactly what physique you want in the future, and then you go build that. And that's missed a lot of day, a lot nowadays too. So, yeah. But other than that, boys, we're gonna call the video here. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm glad to be back on YouTube, um, giving y'all some content. But the reason I went off was because. I didn't have a clear vision for what I wanted my channel to be and what kind of, what I wanted to represent for the bodybuilding community, for myself. Um, so I really spent the last couple months just finding myself and finding really what do I wanna build here? What's the vision? Um, and once I found that, I was like, you know what? I wanna bring back that heavy, hardcore barbell dumbbell training not perfect form, but just going in and fucking killing it. Um, and that's the image now I'm trying to bring to you guys is, especially for my generation, I feel like we're looked at as such pussies. Our whole generation is looked at as pussies from these older guys because we went to optimal training. We went to, instead of intensity, it's how perfectly can I do this movement? It shouldn't be like that. Um, in my opinion at least and I respect everyone who comes in the gym and everyone who comes in because they have the balls to get in here and build something that most people don't most people are sitting on the couch right now playing PlayStation being fat asses where anyone who comes in the gym I respect the fuck out of them. no matter if you're an optimal trainer a crossfitter I don't give a fuck whatever you are I respect the hell out of you but what I want to bring back is for the guys who are like me who got in the sport watching Ronnie Coleman, watching Branch Warren, watching these guys who didn't have perfect form, but it was just hardcore, gritty intensity. And that's what I really wanna bring back to the sport. And as I come up, I wanna motivate you guys to be able to bring that level of intensity and not be scared to, because nowadays, nowadays, you go and train the way I do, you're gonna get judged by everyone in the fucking gym. And I'm trying to make sure that you guys aren't scared because you guys know I'm out there fucking busting my balls too. And you may be looked at like a fucking maniac, but if you're looked at like a fucking maniac, you're doing something right because all the other people in the gym aren't even being looked at. Um, so that's the kind of vision that I want to create and bring to you guys. But strides are starting to come back as the pump's dwindling. Oh. I love this. It's like a double stride. Oh, well, this one. Just, I love that. All right. All right. I'm going to stop talking. You guys have a fucking great rest of your day. And don't be scared to lift some fucking iron the way you know how to. Bye.